I am allergic to lies. Do you know what Chinese kindergartens are like? While kids in other kindergartens eat, sleep, and play games, kids in this Chinese kindergarten do laundry and cook, learning self-reliance. Lies! They have outdoor stoves proportionate to their height, and they make their own meals every day. More lies! From washing and chopping vegetables to cooking. They eat their own cooked meals with such gusto you'd think they're licking the plates clean. Yep, that's a lie. After eating, they voluntarily clean up and even line up to wash dishes. Oh, the principal assigns tasks based on the kids' interests to foster their hands-on skills. They start working right after meals, making baskets or knitting scarves for themselves and even using sewing machines to make clothes. Even more they lies. They embroider, weave mats, and even make their beds. They're taught independence from a young age. Lies. The older kids can cook a meal from scratch, and the younger ones are adept at kneading dough and making pancakes, making chefs jealous. Lies. They even squeeze their own milk and make juice from scratch. From washing and cutting fruit to the final product, they do it all themselves, with teachers offering guidance. Lies! After eating and drinking, they get busy with various activities like embroidery, building walls with mud, making puzzles, drawing, and making decorations. The girls can even practice makeup and hairstyling, becoming professional hairstylists upon graduation. Lies! They never skip school because there's just too much to do. Some netizens say this is real hands-on education, unlike other kindergartens where teachers worry about kids getting hurt. Here, they face challenges head-on, with special forces-style training, Lies. jumping rope while playing basketball, climbing ropes, and building giant Ferris wheels. They learn to ride balance bikes and practice martial arts. Lies. There's no crying when dropping kids off, they run straight to class. Fighting over toys? Non-existent. Lies. Everyone's too busy with their own tasks to bother with that. This is what childhood memories should be like. So childhood memories should be you learning to be a sweatshop worker, stitching together handbags, and making clothes. I don't think so. As you can see, nonsense propaganda like this going around showing Chinese children doing all these like weird cooking and preparing this and that and climbing up ropes and training for military and tearing down guns and whatever. It's rubbish. All of it's nonsense. And I'll explain to you why. Ah, the relaxing sounds of surf. Wait a second, this isn't the 90s anymore, and you can't treat the internet like it's the 90s either. It's time to get a VPN. It's the first line of defense against all kinds of nonsense out there on the internet. I use a VPN, and so should you. Surfshark VPN happens to be the best VPN in the world. It's my first line of defense, and I have it installed on all of my devices. It's a fantastic way to give yourself peace of mind and that little bit of internet security that we all need. But not only that, it helps you with things like discriminatory price gouging. If you set your server to a different country, you'll find out that you can actually get deals like flights and renter cars cheaper than if you were to order them from your own country. It's weird that way. Surfshark VPN is awesome though. Check it out to get some peace of mind, give yourself that extra little bit of security, and take advantage of all the extra services like being able to watch videos that are blocked in your country online. Go to surfshark.com forward slash serpentza to get a huge discount off of a two-year plan, plus four months extra. Hey babe, I just got us four months extra of Surfshark. Again, go to surfshark.com forward slash serpentza and use the code serpentza. And now, back to the show. I actually was a kindergarten teacher in China. It was the first job I ever got, and it's how I got onto my feet in China. I taught kindergarten in a big city for about a year and a half. And I tell you what, it was one of the most interesting and fun and insightful experiences I ever had. You see, I got to see China's education system from the inside out, from the very beginning, from kindergarten. I'm talking about four or five-year-old children. I got to meet their parents. I got to see the materials they were learning. I got to see how they learned. I got to see a lot. It gave me so much insight into Chinese culture because the parents would take me out and wine and dine me because they wanted me to give their children special treatment, you know, the, the way the whole school system works, the way everything went together. It was fantastic. I actually made some of the best friends ever in China when I was teaching kindergarten. I'm talking about fellow teachers. I'm talking about teaching assistants. I'm just talking in general, parents of the children. And the children themselves was an absolute delight uh, to teach children. I saw so much potential. I also saw a lot of pitfalls. But the reason I'm even telling you this is 
I have the experience. I've done it. I know how Chinese kindergartens operate. So I can see through the absolute BS lies and nonsense that all this propaganda is trying to portray. Just like anywhere in the world, you cannot generalize China with one single brushstroke. You cannot say, show a clip of some kids cooking and say, this is what Chinese children learn in kindergarten, because that's not true. The same could be said if I showed you this clip and pretended that this was all of China, because this is happening in China. All I need is some AI voice to say, in China, if you go to a kindergarten, you are so poor, you cannot afford utensils or a place to sit down. In China, the classrooms all have dirt floors. Everybody is struggling to get by and must eat white rice. In China, school is harsh and poor children have to walk for miles in the snow. You know what I mean? Come on, let's not mess around here. It's very easy to make up garbage. So I taught at a top kindergarten in Shenzhen and Shenzhen is a first tier city. So I'm talking about real top. It was very highly rated. Rich people used to buy second homes in that neighborhood just so that their children could come to that kindergarten. Because uh, in China, your child has to go to, you know, the school that's in the district where they live, where they own a house. So the rich people would have their nice house somewhere else and they'd buy a crappy apartment in that area. And then the kid would be able to go to that kindergarten and to those schools in that area. So I got to see how the rich people live. I got to teach the rich kids. So we're talking about top of the pops when it comes to kindergartens. And I promise you, there was none of this stuff you see in the propaganda going on there. It was very simple, very straightforward. Start the day with a flag raising, some nationalist songs that they would sing. Then you get into class. And my job as the English teacher was to entertain. That's what I was there for. So... I have a class for about a half an hour or so, jumping around, doing ABCs or whatever, singing songs with the kids. Then the teaching assistants would teach them something more practical, like reading, writing, some mathematics. And that's where China definitely is ahead of the game, is they really, really start to teach the kids very young, uh, very basic, but very good skills when it comes to mathematics and reading and writing. But other than that, it's all the same. Art classes, finger painting, all that kind of nonsense. They go out and play, you know, and then they have a nap time for two hours in the middle of the day. That's your lunch time when you get to go out and, you know, where the, the teachers would go out. Some of them would also take a nap. But it was very straightforward. None of this stuff you see in the um, propaganda. Now, this propaganda nonsense comes from what are called bushy buns and experimental schools and after school camps and activities and things like that. Somebody's just taken a compilation of all of these things. And they're normal everywhere in the world. I have a five-year-old daughter. She goes to baking camps where she learns how to bake cakes. She goes to art classes. She goes to gymnastics where she climbs ropes and she can do monkey bars and stuff. It's just the norm around the whole world. I mean, of course, you can enroll your child in as many extramural activities as you want. They can go join the, the Girl Scouts or the Boy Scouts or they can take swim lessons or, you know, you know piano lessons, whatever. Same in China. A lot of these are hosted in the schools as extramural activities and that's why somebody's taken basically shots of all these experimental kindergartens, actually called experimental kindergartens. It's kind of funny. You see the English name. It's like, this is the experimental kindergarten. You think, what's going on in there? Are they testing chemicals on the kids or something? But no, it's actually what they're called. They've got these experimental kindergartens where they try out different things. It happens. But again, this is not China. This is a couple of small examples that have been spliced together, very out of the ordinary. 99.9% .9 of Chinese people or Chinese children will not experience any of these things. It's only the richer parents, the ones that have got money to pay for the extra classes and the extra mural activities and so on. And so the purpose for this video is for me to show you that these viral clips that go around, these propaganda clips that get shared around Twitter and shared around TikTok and shared around to say that China's Kindergartens and education is amazing. They do this and this. It's very disingenuous. It's a lie. The focus on education is so great in China that poor children are kind of uh, a slave to their studies because of the fierce competition to get into, um, you know, a decent college or university. And they have to pass this Gaokao exam. So from a very young age, they can no longer be children anymore because they are learning everything. I'm talking about five-year-olds. They're learning from the morning till the afternoon. And then after that, they go to these extramural classes where they learn piano or they learn extra maths or they learn extra English or whatever it is. And then they do that until sort of six, seven, eight in the, in the evening. And then they have to go home and then they have to do homework. So by the time it's ready for them to go to bed, they've spent their entire day studying. It's actually quite sad because I would see this and I would be hired as a tutor 
Because, you know, when I was teaching in kindergarten, the parents used to come to me on the side and say, hey, can you teach my kid extra lessons on the weekend? Or can you teach after school? Um, and there was a place just across the way from the kindergarten that was a, a training center, a bushiban. And they came and got the teachers from my school to go and teach their after class. So my day would be go to the kindergarten in the morning, work a full day to sort of uh, whatever it was, four or five in the afternoon. It was five in the afternoon. Then I would go over to the training center and I'd teach a bunch of the same kids that were in my class or older ones. And they would go into the training center to learn for a number of hours. And then after that, they'd go home. And then on the weekends, I'd be going around to people's houses to train their kids for a number of hours on a Saturday or whatever. So these poor kids, they're just slave to their studies. And it's unfortunately the way China is. If you want your child to be successful, they have to have a fantastic education, the best you can give to them so they can pass their Gaokao exam and get into a good university. So unfortunately, when you see this propaganda, it makes it look as if there's this wonderful education system that's teaching them life skills and all this. But in reality, it's not like that. In reality, children are just forced to study, study, study. And it's mostly like rote parrot stuff where they just learn this and they learn how to, to um, study and repeat and um, it's kind of sad, really, because children don't really have a chance to be children. And that kind of that really did sadden me when I used to teach kids, because just like everywhere else in the world, kids want to play. Kids want to like go out and do things. And, but their parents never would really allow them to do that because study comes first all the time. So the point of this video, those clips going around are bullshit. That's not really how it is in China. I know because I actually taught kindergarten, so I've got first-hand experience. I still have friends that continue to teach kindergarten, so I still have updates on what's going on in the educational field. So don't believe everything you see on the internet and come here for the truth. <laughs> Thanks again for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And of course, as always, stay awesome.